So we're going to talk about a few different techniques here on the arm that we haven't really covered yet. The first one we call coursing. And in Chinese medicine, this has the idea of basically trying to open a channel through an area by working a point, two points along that channel that aren't right next to each other. So if we're trying to open up the back of the arm, the tricep, we may come up and find a point at the top of it. In, in Chinese medicine, this is the small intestine channel. So there's small intestine 10 up here, and small intestine 8 is down here in the arm, and 9 is just above. So I may be trying to basically press both of those points and try to separate slightly while I'm pressing in on those thinking about trying to open up the area between it. If you're not an expert with Chinese medicine points, acupuncture points, I understand. You can do the same concept thinking about musculature. So I can come down and put my finger on the tricep tendon, and I can bring my other finger up and find the long head of the tricep tendon at the other end, gentle pressure, and tractioning those two away from each other trying to treat essentially the entire muscle through two points at either end. Is that too much? Okay. So I'm working the long head of the tricep. If I'm working the lateral head, I may come in and try to find a trigger point or a taut band in that lateral head and still use the tendony area at the bottom. Same kind of thing, separating those two points. That works in the forearm equally as well. So I may come up near the medial epicondyle and try to find a point that's tight. Who has those as body workers, right? And then come down along like flexor digitorum superficialis and feel for a taut point. Gentle pressure and separating those two spots. Just like that can be done without the thumb. The thumb is a common tool for it, but there's no reason it has to be the thumb. I may come in and find that tricep tendon with one, come up and find that lateral head of the tricep area with my knuckle, and separate the two using a knuckle and fingertips. Talking about the forearm, could come in and find that spot with the elbow, come up and find the other spot with my other elbow, Push in, gently separate. That's all coursing. The tool and where you do it can be applied pretty universally. But it works really well on extremities because they're small enough. We can kind of treat a segment at a time. Some people take that even further and will try to do like the whole arm. That's tougher from an anatomical perspective. From a channel perspective, it's fairly easy because I know the small intestine channel's here and it's here. There's not a direct musculature, uh, muscular connection between those, though. So if you're not as familiar with all of the Chinese channels, going past about a segment is, is tough. But that's OK. It's the same concept, whether you're using anatomy or using channels. That's coursing. The other technique we haven't covered is a variation of grasping that we call ringing. And it is exactly what it sounds like. I'm using two hands to do a grasping technique. And as I grasp, I'm twisting and squeezing. So I am wringing the section of the extremity out, just like a dirty dish rag. Get all that tension and squeeze it out of the tricep and bicep. This can be done anywhere, but we're working on the arm. So right now we're sticking to the tricep and bicep. Or coming down and doing that to the flexor and extensor compartment of the forearm. Wringing that out. Just like that. It's a terrible chocolate chip cookie, huh? The worst. I do a sort of variation of this one that's not classic Twina, but I just have always sort of found an affinity to it, and I get a lot of relief for people. And it's basically using my one hand to move the bones, 
and the forearm while I sort of do a ringing and pressing with the other. So if I'm working the flexors in a, a supine or prone position rather, I come up and feel for the area I'm trying to work with my thumb. And while I'm squeezing and wringing with that hand, I'm twisting the forearm contralaterally or against that turn. And I'll walk down, do that all the way down. And then I'll do the same thing, hit it the other way. So I'll come to the lateral edge of the area I'm working and I'll pronate the forearm. Just be careful you're not moving past their range of motion. No tension in there at all. That one you could call delicious and it wouldn't be creepy. Right? No, especially <laughs> not in a room full of body workers. <laughs> it is a delicious one. That same idea of twisting the arm doesn't have to just be applied, again, with thumbs. If I'm working on those flexors and I'm coming in with my elbow with one hand, I can be gently pronating and supinating her wrist. So I'm just going like this while applying that pressure. And that can be done with either arm. If you like this cross elbow, this horizontal elbow to press in, I can reach under and gently pronate and supinate back and forth, just like that. And then if you want to get really fancy, you can be doing your oscillation while you're twisting it back and forth, but not required. So that's our ringing techniques on the tricep and the forearm. Circling is one that's on the handout from yesterday that we didn't actually cover, partly because it's almost exclusively used on the extremities. Uh, and it's, it's probably one you've been doing for years and just didn't know the Chinese call it circling. It is literally making circles, usually with your thumbs. And all you're doing is making external circles or internal circles alternating one to the other. I like to do this one on the carpal tunnel because I don't like a lot of static pressure. The carpal tunnel, when it's inflamed, already has too small of a space. And this applies pressure outward along the carpal tunnel without directly compressing the center of it. So I would gently come in and do that. Sometimes tucking their thumb is easier. Sometimes folding their thumb out of the way on the other side of your hand is easier. Sometimes laying their hand up on the table is easier. You know, it just kind of depends on their arm, the table, your arms. I will do this one all along the adductor and flexor pollicis brevis muscles right here in the web of the thumb where I'm coming underneath to circle. You can circle with both hands, or a lot of times I'll do this little thumb hook and just circle with the one just coming in getting into all those juicy tender bits. Just uh, let me know if I dig too deep, Victoria. <laughs> Are you sure? Elbow drop on the f tiny little flexor pollicis brevis. So that would be circling. The last one we'll talk about for this little section is it's a pushing away technique. So we're applying pressure and moving across the tissue, but it's actually on the tendons here in the palm. So these are flexor digitorum, superficialis, and profundus tendons. And the way that I like to do this is to stretch the tendon that I'm going to be working on. So I'm gently extending the finger, and then I'm going to be pushing along that tendon towards the carpal tunnel. So I'm feeling for the tendon, and I'm tracking straight along it. And it doesn't really make a difference which hand is where. As long as you're holding their hand firmly, you're gently extending, and you're tracking along that tendon. This one feels really good, especially for people with trigger finger and conditions like that, or uh, Dupuytren's constrictures is another one. Uh, this one feels great for. And I just do two or three passes per tendon, usually. We'll do a, a version of this in the foot as well, because it feels wonderful when you have plantar fasciitis. The thing to remember is that the tendons don't run straight. They run all towards the carpal tunnel. So we're tracking at an angle, just like that. 
You can do the thumb even though it's a muscle you're tracking over, not a tendon.